like a little delay also. So, okay. oh, it says you are live. Yay, so, we're live. Oh. <laughs> now there's the awkward delay while people start populating here. Right. <laughs> come on in, come on in. Join us. <laughs> All right, it looks like we're live and doesn't say anybody's watching it, but I'm sure they're just about to start. On their way. They're on their way. <laughs> their notifications. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So if you're joining us live, please go ahead and say hello in the comments. Hello. 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 I see more people popping on. So oh, just say hi, hi Heather. <laughs> Hello, hello. We'll wait a couple of seconds. Hey, Dawn. Good <laughs> hey, morning. Hi, Amy. Oh, and Amy's later on, too. So we get Meredith oh, and Amy today. This is a power day in Clutter. Uh, clutter. Uh, well, it's Clutter Foundations now. I keep wanting to say Clutter Boot Camp. Yeah. Hi, Marsha. Hello, Facebook users. So if you guys are logging on, I just want to remind everyone that if you are interested in the scholarship into Clutter Boss Academy, you just need to drop me an email and let me know that you're interested so I can put you into the pool of people eligible for the scholarship. So you just need to let me know that you would like to be in Clutter Boss Academy because I don't want to give the scholarship to somebody who's not ready for that. So, so yeah. just drop me an email, jess at prioritizeyoursanity.com. And we're going to go ahead and get started with this interview. So you guys, I am so excited to have Meredith on the call with us today. I'm going to let Meredith introduce herself, but just personally, I have worked with Meredith for, I don't even know how long now, like. <laughs> I think it was 2015, 2015, I think, Jess. A lot of years. <laughs> going on long-term relationship. We That's right. <laughs> one that we like. <laughs> yes, it just keeps getting better. It does. It does. So <laughs> Meredith, I found through some like very strange, you know, social media channels and <laughs> something about her messaging about health and nutrition just really clicked with me. And following her, working with her was the one thing that helped me just in all the ways, right? Mostly mentally and emotionally, which it's so funny because nutrition and health. There's, there's a huge component to it. Um, so let me let Meredith introduce herself and then we can talk about how, well, we'll just kind of take it from there. Well, I'm here. Good morning or good afternoon, depending where you are, what coast you're on. I am so thrilled to be here with all of you and to be here with Jess, who is one of my favorite people. She's always like exuding sunshine, no matter when we talk, no matter what we're talking about, it's always good energy. So I'm happy to be here. A little bit about me, I'm not going to make it long, because um, I want this really to be value added for you guys. You you guys are here for a reason. Um, and thanks for showing up. So for the last it's been almost 11 years now, 2009 is when I started um, my journey as um, an integrative nut nutritionist health coach. Um, and I, over those years, have worked with literally thousands of women now. Um, and I work with them on helping them improve their health and fitness, which is not unique. There's tons of coaches out there, right? That all do that, that will give you a meal plan. We'll tell you what exercises to do. We'll tell you to eat this, not that. Um, the approach that I take and the way I work with my clients and with groups such as um, the Clutter Boss Academy is to really drill down to understanding why we need to take care of ourselves, right? It's not about another diet. It's not about more restrictions or punishing or, oh, I failed and, oh, I just going to start again tomorrow. Um, it's really understanding why it is like our real job, right? To take care of ourselves so that we can then take care of the people around us. And, and for a long time, a lot of women, and I think especially this year um, in particular, we're, we're wearing lots and lots of hats. We've been expending so much energy taking care of everything around us, our homes, our jobs, trying to be the best employee or business owner and mother and spouse and friend and daughter and on and on. Um, and we lose ourselves in the process. So the way I um, work with women is to 
take what can seem very overwhelming. How, do, how am I going to get healthy? How am I going to lose weight? How am I going to decrease inflammation? How am I going to start an exercise program? And break it up into very small, manageable steps. So we start with one thing and then we do that for a while and then <laughs> and then we go on to the next little thing. So we're, we're slowly moving forward. Um, we're learning to take care of our bodies and our minds and um, we're, we're learning to trust our, our own body's intuition, knowing that we know what is best for us. And we learn to lean on each other for support because a group of women who are all working towards a common goal is a really powerful um, group. So I'm really happy to be with you all and share a little bit of knowledge um, with you, some, some tips, some things that I've learned along the way in working with um, all types of women. Um, as old as late 60s, early 70s, to as young as um, teens that are, um, you know, 18, 19, and want to get a jump start on living a healthy life before they go off to college. So, and everything in between, lots of moms. Um, I'm a mom myself. I have two little boys that are six and eight. They went to school today. So that's why I'm on here with you at 11 o'clock instead of homeschooling them. So um, yeah, anyways, that's my, that's a little bit about me. Love to, love to um, answer any questions as we go along as well. So Meredith, I have a question just before you start with your tips. Yeah, sure, sure. So I worked with Meredith in her group coaching programs for a while. And then when I started Clutter Boss Academy, I knew that there needed to be a health and nutrition component yeah. to go with my whole approach, because it's basically the same as your approach. Let's yeah. tackle it all, yeah. right? Support you in every area. So mm -hmm. I reached out to Meredith and asked her if she would coach in Clutter Boss Academy. And she very thankfully agreed. Uh -huh. So I'm curious, Meredith, when you started working with the clutter group, yeah. what, did you have any like aha moments? Like, like, wow, there's like some connections between clutter and health. Like, I'm wondering from your perspective, what it was like. Yeah. Well, first of all, it was such an interesting experience to work with these women. Um, in, in the past, normally who I've been working with has been, um, a very different group, um, endurance athletes, triathletes, runners, swimmers, um, people that, you know, had like a plan. They're very type A, they want to get this done. And then you just like tell them what to do and they do 10 extra things. Um, the clutter boss group, I found that I had to uh, adjust my message to really um, simplify it. And not, not because like they didn't understand it, but because if I threw too many more things at them in a world that was already feeling very chaotic and um, overstuffed with stuff, they would, like anyone, would just shut down because we all know that like a confused mind just says no. So I had to sort of tailor my messaging to be really one thing at a time, very actionable um, and cut through a lot of, I can't, I, I would like to do it, but, or I'll do it once I get this in order. Always having like conditions of, I, I feel like, I feel like, a, and we all deal with clutter in all different ways. Um, but I feel like and when you're really struggling with clutter, you're really struggling with um, procrastination, just like waiting waiting to get conditions in order to to take action. And so when you're you're wanting to work on your health and fitness, it's the same thing. I always encourage people to just start like start small, but start. Okay. Don't wait for X, Y, and Z to be perfect. I have to wait until I get my planner so that I can put my workouts into my planner. I have to wait till my new fitness equipment comes in the mail because I can't do my bicep curls without my new bands, or I can't wait. I, mean, I have to wait to start um, cooking healthy meals until I get that air fryer or my Instapot. You know what I mean? Like it's all <laughs> waiting for stuff that you don't need. Like you, you can, we can start, we have a glass and we have a source of water and that's where we start <laughs> always like starting with water and starting with hydration. So, um, yeah, I think that's one of the things that, that I noticed most and just understanding also it's seeing the connection between, 
um, when there was clutter, there was almost like a blockage, like they could not start to work on um, eating healthier or preparing a good meal for themselves because they couldn't find their pots and pans. Like they <laughs> couldn't find, like they're, they had vegetables in the produce drawer, but they were slimy and old because there was so much stuff on top of it. So it was just a process of like cleaning out, clearing out so you can see what you have and then you can start to take action. So it's been a really interesting process. Fascinating. And, you know, I remember the day that one of our clutter bosses cleared off her kitchen counter and she, her aha moment was now I can make a sandwich. Wow. Right? <laughs> so there's such a close connection between your health in yeah. every area of your life and your clutter. And I think Meredith's message of simplicity and just starting it absolutely goes along with Exactly, exactly how we approach clutter. If yeah. you guys can relate to procrastinating or saying, I need to do this before that, mm -hmm. drop a little heart. <laughs> Give us a little <laughs> thumbs up. Let us know that this is, you know, resonating. <laughs> yeah. The other thing, and your point about like clear clutter to make a sandwich. Um, one thing I noticed in working with the group and individually with, with clients is that they eat out way, way more if they're kitchen is cluttered. It's just like a, um, almost just a survival thing. Like if you don't know what you have, or if you're, you feel so disorganized that you can't get a grocery list together to make two or three meals for dinner this week, you know, running out to McDonald's or running out to Panera or Chipotle or whatever is so much easier ordering in a pizza just because then you don't have to find all this stuff. So, um, one of the best ways to improve our health is just simply to start cooking. Anything that you're cooking is going to be better than than eating out and it's going to save you money. So, you know, figuring out how to clear some white space in your kitchen will keep you out of the drive through. A lot of times we don't see that like consciously, like I keep going out to eat. Why am I doing that? It's because maybe the environment of your kitchen and your fridge and your pantry makes you feel so lost and overwhelmed that it's just easy to go somewhere else. So be aware of that. Absolutely. And then of course, when you, and this is what I personally experienced working with Meredith, when I put bad food into my body, my yeah. brain thinks bad thoughts. And then yeah. I get into this negative feedback loop yes. where I don't take action. Right. So there's like another, there's the mental emotional connection also. It's absolutely, everything. absolutely. Everything that we eat and drink um, and consume, not just food wise, but consume through our eyes, right? Like whether it's social media or television or um, any type of media, it has an effect on our on our body at the cellular level. It changes our thoughts. It changes our motivation, changes how we feel. If we're eating a high sugar or high salt or high inflammatory fat diet, which is pretty much what what eating out or eating processed food consists of, we will feel unwell, right? It, it just garbage in, garbage out. And that's what that's where I see the opportunity. I am an eternal optimist. I don't care where you're starting from. I don't care if you're if you can't see the floor in your kitchen right now and you've been eating at McDonald's for the last month, you can improve. You can improve starting today. And the great thing is like your body and your mind can start feeling better literally by tomorrow if you make some changes today. Our bodies are that resilient. They respond very quickly and beautifully to the things that we can put in our bodies that begin to start the healing process, that start to lower inflammation, that, that help calm the anxiety and the depression. Foods that we eat can make us depressed, okay? I don't know if everybody actually knows and recognizes that because it is a huge piece of the puzzle of our mental health, but food that we eat can make us depressed and food that we eat can make us feel well and can make us feel energized and more optimistic. So, um, you know, we can get into like, what are some of those things? Um, 
if you'd like, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I just want to want to put that out there that like no matter where how you're feeling as you're listening to this right now, if you feel like everything is upside down and a mess and you don't know where to start, um, there's something that you can do today. You don't have to wait for perfect conditions um, to begin. Okay. Can I just uh, interject yeah. here, Meredith? And I yeah. think this is one thing that I love about you and one thing that resonates with the programs that I do also is I 100% believe that everybody is capable of getting to the point that they want to get to. And you 100% believe that everybody is capable of getting to the point where they need to get to. And it's, I think you just need the right tools and the right information and the right skills. Right. There's right. Nobody is hopeless. Right. Nobody, <laughs> Regardless of what you tell yourself or how bad you think your clutter mm -hmm. is or your health mm -hmm. is or whatever, Every single person is capable of making change and getting to where they want to, period. I have never worked with somebody who I'm like, oh, God, this is hopeless, ever. It's not. It's just not. You can change. <laughs> right. Uh, I agree 100%. Um, and you make a great point of, of having the right information, though. I think that's really key. I think they get that from you um, in in all of your Clutter Boss Academy of, of the tools of how to do it. And then from the health and wellness perspective, um, I provide that same type of like step-by-step -step information that I think a lot of us um, like take for granted. Um, much of what we've been taught and told about nutrition and health is just wrong. It's wrong or it's incomplete. And so you can't blame yourself for what you were never taught. Um, all you can do is be open-minded and start fresh today, whether you're 46 years old or 58 years old, like you can start today. Um, the whole diet industry and, and health and wellness industry um, that builds billion dollar diet programs based upon calories in and calories out and looking at at food purely as a number, uh, as calories or macros, protein, carbs, and fats, and nothing else, not understanding the whole effect on the body um, is a disservice. It's done a huge disservice to um, all of us, really, but particularly women who we know we start dieting at you know in their teens and probably tweens nowadays, and where you have programs that have you tracking and counting points and saving up points so that you can have wine and chocolate cake later, but you're going to eat nothing until five o'clock. Um, those all fit into little diet programs that are very, very popular and are um, uh, endorsed by, by very well-recognized um, icons of people. Um, so those are very irresponsible and, and, and very much um, to blame for a lot of the, the health mess that we are in right now. Um, so things like low fat, fat free, um, diet foods, sh um, sugar free foods, foods that are full of chemicals and sugar alcohols, but have very low, you know, low calories. So we think we can eat more of them, um, sort of vilifying um, all fats, not understanding the difference between different types of fats, thinking that um, eating foods that are are naturally higher in cholesterol are bad for us like oh no eggs no eggs are bad but i'll have this um you know breakfast cereal that's low fat with skim milk and very high, high carbohydrate so it's it's being open to relearning and rethinking um what nutrition is what health really looks like and and having the a, a recognition at least that much of what you may have been taught in the past is is just simply incorrect there's there's um you know definitely industries that that lobby and that work hard to influence food policies um and that make us think that one thing is is healthy or part of a healthy diet um when in fact it is not. So just want to put that out there too, in case you're like, oh man, I wish I would have, I wish I would have known. We're all learning, right? We all learn as we, as we go, um, but just stay open, um, stay open to new information. And of course the diet industry is preying on your fear, right? So they all, they know how to make you purchase something because they know how to make you afraid, afraid of some possible future outcome. And 
another thing that we talk about a lot in Clutter Boss Academy is sales and how you can see through the sales pitch and the sales, all, all, everything about advertising. And I mean, advertisers have never, ever had more information about what triggers the sale. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. And I think there's like the best example is the health and diet industry. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And that that kind of leads me to the next point, which is to keep it simple. OK, when anything related to health and fitness, keep it simple. Um, I get questions all the time about what do you think of this product? And this, you know, they send me a, a screenshot of the front and the back. And um, it's, you know, it's got antioxidants and probiotics and um, it part, it's keto friendly and it's gluten free and it's this and it's that. All of that's on the front. And then I always ask them to show me what's on the back, what's on the ingredient label. And that's where we start to like put on our little detective hat and we go line by line of each ingredient. And we ask ourselves, is something with, um, you know, with three different types of sweeteners and a preservative and this for color and that, like, is that truly part of a, a healthy product. And, you know, just to, we can spend all day like analyzing different food labels and deciding, is this good or is this not good? And all, a lot of those are in the health food aisle too. That's what I, that's the, you know, kind of ironic part. I'm not talking about we're in the junk food aisle, but we're in the health and wellness um, aisle and there's all these products and it gets very confusing for people. And so what I would leave you with is this is, that if you have to ask is do you think this is a healthy product and you, you don't have time to like look at and you know google search each ingredient you can assume it's not like if it's got 15 ingredients and two, you know only two or three look somewhat recognizable to you um i'd pass honestly just pass like think of all the time and energy that you would save from from analyzing that label instead take your cart and go around the perimeter of the store. When I'm talking about keeping it simple, I'm talking about eating fresh, loading your cart with fresh produce. Frozen too is fine, but lots of plants, right? Eat the rainbow, lots of colors. Fill that cart up with that first. So we add in, we add in the cart to crowd out stuff that we don't want in the cart. We want all the good stuff. And then you keep going around the perimeter. You get your healthy, high quality proteins, whatever that might be. Um, I'm, I don't prescribe a particular diet to people um, because I don't know you, right? I, unless I know all about your background and your food allergies and your sensitivities and your likes and your dislikes, I'm not going to say you should be eating this, this, and this every day. Um, so for people to provide like a meal plan and say, you should be eating this for the next seven days. Really? How do you know that? You don't know anything about me. So it's up to you, right? This is where you get empowered to like choose, do experiments and many experiments on yourself every time you have a meal. How do I feel after I had chicken with sweet potatoes and some roasted broccoli? How did I feel? Did I feel pretty good? Or did I have like a weird stomach reaction after? Was it something that I ate? we each get to decide like what is our ideal diet i'm going to guide you and say stick to the perimeter get your fresh veggies your fresh fruits your healthy fats get nuts and seeds get um high quality proteins um you know basic stuff stay out of the junk aisles but you know you're gonna you're going to have to do some some experimenting to figure out what exactly works the best for you. So um, that's the other tip. Like if someone, if some health expert like has all the answers for you and says, you must eat this way. I eat this way. All my clients eat this way. You must eat this way. You must be plant-based or you must be keto ketogenic or whatever. Find someone else because they, they are um, not maybe not understanding the bigger picture of bioindividuality and that each person is very unique um, in what works best for them. So um, keep it simple. Preach it, Meredith. <laughs> I love listening to you talk about food. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just, 
it, it's so out there. You know, I mean, it's so it's gotten how did we get to this point. I mean, that's why. I I I, how did we get to this point where like you could manufacture an apple? Like, <laughs> yes, right. And then you can like dehydrate it, and then turn it into a powder, and then add some um, special protein to it. You know what I mean? Like, just. It, as you think of uh, like clutter in your house and like removing extra stuff, I think of food in the same way. I try not to, like if we start with just what you drink every day, um, if you're overwhelmed with like the number of choices of things and um, juices and seltzers and sparkling water and sodas and kombucha and you know, all this stuff. And if it makes you kind of crazy, just drink water. Like literally you, water does the trick. <laughs> like That's all you really need. Um, so if, if you're trying to clear the clutter of your home, I would, you know, take that same approach to your diet too. And, and kind of simplify, keep like capsule wardrobe, capsule food. Capsule meal plan. <laughs> meal plan. It works. It you need to do that's like the best idea like a two-week rotating meal plan that everyone likes and feels healthy and is easy to prepare yeah I've definitely done that when like things are stressful and like this week it's <laughs> super <laughs> stressful. Like, a lot going on this week it's like I just can't do but I think about you know um, I think humans make like 60,000 decisions every single day and we just run out of and every time you make a decision you actually burn, and I'm going to probably mess up all of the information here, but you burn glucose, right? So to make a decision, you're actually mm -hmm. expending energy. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about what's healthier, seltzer or kombucha or, you know, the 400 like health drinks that you could be yes. drinking, yes. you're really burning through all of your decision-making power and mm -hmm. actually exhausting yourself because mm -hmm. you're expending sugar and glucose to make those decisions. So then how can you possibly deal with your clutter? Because right. clutter is all delayed decisions because you've burned through all of that decision-making power. And that's why it's so critical to have this other aspect to go with, with tackling your clutter. You can't separate them. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And that's where we get that decision fatigue, which usually happens around four, five o'clock. And what do we usually reach for at that time? Something to replace the sugar that we've burned <laughs> in our brain, right? Um, so that's where like we might want a glass of wine to calm down. We might want some dark chocolate to like get through the afternoon. Um, there's a reason for that. I mean, I think that is something to be aware of too, is that for, there's a reason I'm, I'm big into like root, getting to root causes of things. Like if every day at the same time you find yourself foraging in the kitchen for something sweet, it's not just because like you want to do that. It's because something was missing earlier on, right? I would go back to your, your earlier meals, breakfast. Did you have enough protein? Was there enough fiber to hold you over. Um, lunch, same thing. Did you skip lunch? Did you um, eat like trying to eat healthy, like eat like a little salad with a little bit of carrots and cucumber and some fat free dressing? Well, no wonder you're like digging for food a couple hours later and digging for sugar specifically because sugar is the quickest energy source for our bodies to burn. So when we are deficient in in nutrients and deficient in energy that's what looks really appealing to us um we don't often go like rifling around for um like turkey or a chicken breast or something <laughs> like we want something quick and sweet because it gives us that instant energy so i always encourage people if you notice patterns of or it's like oh, I eat really well all day. And then once I get the kids to bed and it's quiet and the house is like mine, then you get into like the snacks or the alcohol or whatever. So um, recognizing your own personal patterns and then working backwards to go, well, did I even eat enough at dinner or was I too busy standing up and down like serving everybody else? You probably didn't eat enough at dinner and you probably didn't eat enough at lunch. And you probably didn't have a breakfast. And that's the pattern that I see with women who are very busy, very high achieving women, women that are, you know, spinning lots of things at all times. 
they're usually not eating enough, which is like, huh, they, they don't, they're very surprised to hear that. They're always like, oh, I keep gaining weight and I can't lose this weight. And oh, maybe it's because it's hormones and I'm in my mid forties. And I guess that's just what happens. And then I look at their food journals and I see that they're like barely eating a thousand calories a day. And I go, well, this is the problem. You are eating so little that your body is responding by turning down your metabolism. It's literally trying to help you by slowing everything down, slowing thyroid output. This is where you'll start to see problems in your thyroid panels um, that is not just normal and that is not just genetic and it's not just it runs in our family, but it's the way that you're taking care of yourself. It's, it's the missing meals. It's the not eating enough nutrient-dense food that causes your body to slow down. And as it slows down, it burns through muscle, right? Isn't that great? <laughs> like the muscle that we're trying to build, it eats away at it if we are not well nourished. And so, you know, it may seem ironic, like that the health coach is telling you to eat more, eat more. Oftentimes I am telling you to eat more because usually we're not eating enough or we're eating too much of foods that are not nourishing us. So we're overfed and undernourished, which is a, a really unhappy place to be. And Meredith actually knows more about nutrition than anybody I've ever met in my entire oh, <laughs> <sweet>. <laughs> I think everyone got a little insight into this now, but I'll ask us what I think is a super simple question and get like sure. a very detailed, this is why answer with like all sorts of scientific data to back it up. I'm like, man, she just knew that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I love this. I'm like the biggest nutrition nerd I think <laughs> you'll ever run into. Um, I would talk about this if this was not my job. So I guess I'm in the right job. <laughs> I just, honestly, I love sharing this stuff with people because there's so many light bulb moments so many women like are trying so hard and they're working their asses off and they're like going feel like they're going backwards because so much of what they've been taught is wrong. Um, and so it's it's so like eye opening when you start to realize like, oh, when I'm hungry, I can eat. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Like I don't have to like hold off and stay within like this and this it opens up like a whole world when you start to understand what you can eat and what you can eat in abundance that will actually energize you and that will make you feel better so that you can tackle all of the, the projects that you want to do in your house rather than like sit, sit on the couch. Because why? Not because you're lazy, not because you lack motivation, but because you have no energy. You have no good fuel in the tank. So of course you don't, you're not going to have good energy output. And I have been so impressed with the women in Jess's Clutter Boss Academy group that have shown up every single week on my coaching calls from all different walks of life, all different places of struggle, and they are making fantastic changes, like unbelievable, um, creating new morning routines, walking every day, walking miles every day, um, reducing their sugar, cooking, like eating fish and vegetables and trying new vegetables and roasting a vegetable that they've never even touched before in their life. So it is possible. It is doable for every single person. Um, if you are in the right place with people who are working toward a similar goal and that have your back and that are giving you the information that you need and then cheering you on as you go. I mean, that's kind of the winning formula for anybody. It's not magic. It's just <laughs> consistency. It's like just showing up, just show up and do the stuff. And you too can be like a successful testimonial. I mean, that's, <laughs> I see it happen all the time. I love also that you said the word lazy because something I hear all the time is I must just be lazy. And I look at you and I'm like, wait, you've been caring for somebody who's been ill for six years. You've been raising a family. You've been cleaning out somebody's estate. And you think you're lazy? Like, yeah. no, no, no. Let's no. not use that word. There's other stuff going on here. Definitely right. not lazy. Mm -hmm. Just helping people see you know, yeah, there's so many other things to think about, mm -hmm. so many other reasons, but right. it's not your fault. You have clutter. 
It's right. not your fault if you haven't been taught the right diet and nutrition right. advice. Right. You know, it's just not your fault. You're just right. in, in this world and now you're making change and growth. And that is the beautiful thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and along those lines, I would say the thing that I see in people that holds them back um, is a fear of failure. Like um, they don't want to start. They don't want to try another attempt at like eating healthy because they've failed, quote unquote, failed so many times in the past. And to that person who is listening to this and is like, oh, that sounds good, but I've tried everything before. And it's going to be the same thing again. Um, don't allow your fear of failure to keep you from starting. We all fail. Nobody is doing this 100% perfect every day. Nobody. Um, so we learn to fail forward together. Like we, we try to string a few day, good days together. Then we have a little slip. And then we have a moment of like, Hmm, what happened there? Like some self-awareness always helps before you like make your next decision. And then you pick yourself up, you brush yourself up and you go forward with the group, with the people that are also failing forward. And slowly you start to string more and more um, healthy days, happy days. You're going to start to notice that they go together. When you are doing healthy things, you start to feel happier. Okay. Um, it's just endorphins. It's you start moving, you start to get happy brain chemicals. You start eating good food, you start to get happy brain chemicals. So you can do all of those things. Don't let a fear of failure stop you in your tracks. Just know that no one's doing it right. Nobody's perfect, but we are trying together. And every time we fail, we get up and we, and, and we do it again. I actually have um, a term for that, which is re-rail, right? <laughs> Talks about rerail on the end. <laughs> so full disclosure, I stole that term from Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great term. I got it from one of the clients in my group, uh, Rebecca from Colorado. Do you remember her? She's like, I'm so tired of derailing that I'm just I rerail, rerail, like all derail from time to time. But we rerail just as often. We never give up. Never. So so interesting. The fear of fear of failure. Another thing that I see that holds people back is a fear of success. What if I do change and make a difference? I'm going to be a totally different person now. How is everyone else going to react to me? So either way, it's driven by fear, whatever's holding you back, fear of failure or fear of success. And we have to stop letting our lives be dictated by fear. Absolutely. Any decision that is made through fear is going to be a poor decision, right? Um, and the fear of failure or the fear of success, which is very real, um, I think they're both focused on external people, like what people are going to think. Um, they're going to see me fail again. They're going to go, oh God, she's doing another diet thing. Here we go. And it's just going to be great. And then in two weeks, it'll be over. And um, so you, you stop yourself from trying because of what you're worried about hearing from someone else, or on the positive side, you start to lose some weight. You start to get strong. You got some muscles in your back, and you you and maybe you're a little bit like like nervous about that because you don't want people to think, oh, who does she think she is, and blah blah. blah. And it's all about others. Who cares? <laughs> Those are not your people. People that don't celebrate your success and that secretly cheer for your failures, they suck. They're not your people. So that's, we don't care. That's right. They do and they should really. And that's that's why you need these groups, right? Because <laughs> we are going to cheer for you. When you pull 10 sheets of paper from your house, we're going to say, amazing. That's amazing. Because we know it's amazing. And when you drink eight glasses of water, we're going to say, yes. <laughs> That is so awesome because you're doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And if you can't tell that we are authentically like happy for you, I don't know. Like I think people are put on this earth for, for usually like they have a sole purpose. And mine is nutrition and wellness. Like I see the potential in every single person and I will help you get there if you do the work. Jess is in that same mm -hmm. mode and and mindset with clutter and clearing and organization. And so when we're cheering for you or when we're giving you like a little 
you know, kick in the pants, like, come on, like, all right, that's enough of like the excuse making. It's always driven by love and by knowing that you can do better. Um, so I think you need a kind of healthy um, dose of both. We're not just like, yay, cheerleaders, whatever you do, that's great. We will call you out at like, if you are not doing what we know you're able to do, but it's always with you, with so, you and my so love it's with yeah. so much love <laughs> yeah we know how lives transition and change and open up and the world just becomes a different place when you really believe in yourself yeah. and that it's magic yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> absolutely does anyone have any questions before we wrap up? And we can't get too technical with the questions because of the format here, but general right. questions. Yeah. Anybody who's got a question. And there is a little bit of a delay. So okay. they're like just hearing what we said now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so while we're waiting for any questions to come in, Meredith, once you're one, if you had like one health tip, and I can almost guess what it is, like the most basic thing. What mm -hmm. would you do um, I'm going to give you, uh, I, just as like the visual aid for this one, <laughs> right now, I too, I have my herbal tea here. Um, I think starting with hydrating yourself is a really, really good place to start because it's very accessible to everyone. Um, the idea of like, meal planning and grocery shopping can kind of stop you in your tracks. Um, but most of us are very dehydrated. Like right now we are, we are, there's um, just something like 70% of people are dehydrated at any given time. Um, we live in, you know, a culture where we wake up and drink coffee first thing. So my, my number one tip, um, which is also happens to be my first lesson of my course, well rooted 30 course, um, is all about hydration and why that is the reason that is the first lesson and first step is because it can make such a difference in your energy levels, in um, the alkalinity or acidity of your body and how prone you are to getting sick when you're exposed to viruses and bacteria. It affects your mood, it affects your skin, it affects your digestion, your elimination. If you're constipated, you're just not drinking enough water. That's a huge piece of it. Um, so start with replacing sugar-sweetened beverages with water. That's it. That's it. Um, and drink a lot, uh, more than what you're probably drinking. There is an actual prescription based on your body weight for how much water you want to be trying to drink every day. And that is your current weight divided in half. Okay. So if you're 160 pounds, you cut that in half. Your goal is to drink 80 ounces of water or unsweetened herbal tea every day. Okay. Super simple, right? <laughs> Just drink water. And when you drink that much water, you're going to start to replace a lot of the sugary or highly caffeinated or all sorts of different things in different drinks that is taking the place of water right now. Okay. So that would be my first and most important tip for you. And then notice how you feel. Notice how much like you're eliminating stuff now and maybe you're not as hungry and maybe you're not as um, snacky in the afternoon because you you were really hungry, but you thought you were really, I'm sorry, you were really thirsty, but you thought you were hungry. A lot of times we get those two things confused. So the question that's come up is how can we join Meredith's group, which is a good oh, question. No. <laughs> so um, I'll tell you just kind of like ways to, to follow, follow me. Okay. So <laughs> options. And then there's, um, coached options. And then if you go through Jess's channel, I am there every week too. So mm -hmm. there's lots of different options. So first and foremost, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at wildberry wellness. Okay. Wildberry is all one word wellness. I post there pretty much daily. I do lots of Insta stories. Um, I show what I'm cooking. I'm cooking for my kids. I show you how I'm working out, trying to manage all the things. So that's a really great place to start. There's a lot of videos already shared on my Facebook page as well. Um, I 
talk about tea. I talk about making healthy smoothies because lots of smoothies are not healthy, but I like demonstrate how to make, put together a healthy smoothie for you. Um, easy breakfast ideas, all sorts of things on the Facebook Wildberry Wellness page. Um, I am going to be doing a free five days well-rooted challenge. Um, and it's five days of really good content where I give you uh, I'll do a live video every day and I'll give you an action item each day. So five days well-rooted. That's going to be February 15th through the 19th. I'm going to share a link where you can sign up to be part of that group. Um, put the link into our Facebook group also. Okay, yeah, that, that would be awesome. So um, you can go to wildberrywellness.com, put your name and email in there to um, opt in for, for updates, for invitations to free um, programs like that. And then um, my signature course is a 30-day health and wellness nutrition course called wellrooted30.com. Oh, not wildrooted30.com. That's the website. It's called Wellrooted30. You get one lesson each day for 30 days, an action item with each lesson. You learn all about nutrition and exercise and stress and sleep and lifestyle changes um, and longevity. So it's a very holistic, very um, multifaceted course. It's not just about nutrition. It's called Wellrooted30. Um, dot com. That's a course that you can join at any time. Um, and we have a private Facebook group that's really awesome, really nice people, very supportive, very much like Jess's group. So if you really want to hone in on your health and fitness in this new year, that would be a great place to, to, to be. If you want to work on all things clutter, including your health and fitness, then you join <laughs> Jess's Clutter Boss Academy, where I um, am lucky enough to join you every week on Thursday afternoons. And we have an hour long um, call, coaching call, where we really dig into some really interesting topics. And it's a lot of back and forth. People are very open. They have a lot of questions. They share their successes and their struggles. So there's lots of different um, opportunities to stay connected, um, depending on what your your needs are right now. And we also have your well-rooted 30 lessons in our mm -hmm. lesson library of Clutter Boss Academy. So yep. Either way, <laughs> you yep. can get Meredith. Meredith, there's one more thing to multivitamin. Is it okay or recommended to take if a diet if your diet isn't getting a bunch of the recommended amount of nutrients? Do you have a short answer for that one? Say the big. I'm sorry, I missed the beginning. The first part. Uh, taking a multivitamin. There's conflicting advice around that. Yes. Um, so in general, I would say um, for the average person taking a daily multivitamin, I would say high quality multivitamin um, is a good thing. Um, it it kind of fills in a lot of nutritional gaps that are, are usually glaring in most people's diets who are eating a, a standard diet. Um, even if you are eating what you feel like is a pretty healthy diet, I, I do think a multivitamin um, is a good idea. Um, this, there was a couple years ago, there was like this, you know, conflicting, like multivitamins are bad for you. I uh, dug into a lot of that, that research. And the more you kind of dug, the more it wasn't um, that a lot, it wasn't like as alarming as the media made it um, sound <laughs> surprising. <Hi. laughs> I know that that's hard to believe. Um, but so yeah, as supplements, I, I, I think of multivitamins, um, fish oils, and vitamin D, um, those are all supplements that are, are quite important for us right now. Um, vitamin D, vitamin C, uh, zinc and a, a high quality fish oil and a high quality multivitamin are, are kind of like a, a good um, standard for, for most people. It's not going, it's not going to like hurt you um, to have those things and people shouldn't be scared into not taking a, a multivitamin. What's a high quality multivitamin? I'm not going to give like, um, you have to have this specific vitamin, but I would look for food-based vitamins. Um, so Rainbow Light and Garden of Life are both food-based multivitamins, which tend to be, um, you know, easier for the body to absorb so that you're not just like taking it in and pooping it out. We don't want to like waste 
um, money that way. And always, you know, think food first. I th that sometimes I, I steer people away from who, because some people get like get really into like all the vitamins. Just tell me what vitamins I should take. And I'm taking these 15 supplements and da, 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 da. And I'm like, well, what are you eating? Let's see what you're eating because it's food first, right? Um, eating an apple is so different in our body than eating um, a vitamin that has a high amount of vitamin A in it, right? Okay. So our bodies know how, know what to do with, with food in its natural state. And it takes all the different parts of it and uses it properly. Um, so we don't want to get into the thinking that like, oh, I can kind of blow off what I'm eating because I'm taking all these supplements and I'm getting it that way. The, the vitamins and supplements are always just that. They're, they're supplementary. Food is first. <laughs> okay. So there's one more question and we'll end with this one. Um, is there any way to get the benefits of fish oils without the horrible taste or burping? It's a good question. Yeah. So if you're getting burping and horrible taste, your fish oil is poor quality. That's first and foremost. Um, uh, Nordic Naturals is my go-to brand for, for fish oil. It's really pure. Um, it's just doesn't have all the, the junk in it that, that some do. Um, other things you can do is keep your fish oil in the refrigerator. Um, it just helps from the oil to prevent it from going rancid, which can create some of that that um, unpleasantness. Um, but yeah, if you're if it's causing you to have those icky uh, responses, that I would look for a different a different brand and eat fish. But eat fish <laughs> three times a week: wild salmon, sardines. I do my wild salmon on my salad at lunchtime. It's so good. Oh, good. From like the packet. Yeah, <laughs> nice. It works. World food <laughs> salad. <laughs> that sounds really good. So Meredith, thank you so, so, so much for being a part of our interview series this week. I mean, this is such incredible information and I'm so happy to share it with everyone. Um, I want to remind everyone, once again, if you're interested in the Clutter Boss Academy Scholarship, make sure you drop me an email so I know to enter you into the drawing. Ooh. And then we have an interview coming up in an hour. We're all interviewed today with <laughs> Amy Farrell, and the topic is perseverance. <laughs> well, I can't talk anymore. Perseverance. It is definitely going to be an interview that you want to hear because Amy was in Clutter Boot Camp one year ago and has made just her well she'll tell you but her, <laughs> her has been incredible um so anyway thank you so much meredith i'm thank so you. Glad you agreed to this and thank you guys everyone for popping on and we'll see you maybe in an hour or you can catch the <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much jess it was so fun and great so to fun. see you and onward to your next interview you're like <laughs> <laughs> have a good day okay. everyone bye bye guys thank bye. you